Celebration Sunday. Man, what a great, what a great day. We're celebrating all of the classes that students have taken throughout this year because their desire is to grow in relationship with Jesus and knowledge of Jesus. And it's absolutely incredible. We had 314 uh, students take classes. We had 105 support staff that make all of that happen. We had 88 staff for children and youth ministries. So this involves a lot of people, a lot of people uh, who have been involved in taking classes. Our mission statement here is to make devoted followers of Jesus. Devoted followers, not Christians, because everybody calls himself a Christian. I want people who are really following Jesus. Following Jesus. And to follow him, you got to know him. you got to know who he is if you're going to follow him. It goes on to say, in community, we do this all together. We rub shoulders together. And we're empowered by the Holy Spirit because we want the presence of the living God. Because if he's not in it, then what are we in it for? I'm in it because God's in it. I want his presence. Last week I concluded with this scripture. And I want to just take a few moments to... Um, to talk about it because I went through it pretty fast. It's in Colossians 1.10. It says that you may, may walk worthy of the Lord. The word worthy means appropriate or after a godly sort. That you walk worthy, that you're worthy of, of following Jesus. And then it says this, fully pleasing him. How do we do this? How do we, how do we, Please God by the rest of the verse here, being fruitful in every good work, and the second part, increasing or growing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God pleases Him. That's what pleases him when he knows that you're growing in him, that you love him, you care about him, your relationship is growing, your understanding of him is growing, you keep growing more and more and more. You understand more and more truth because more and more of this is getting into here. Actually, it goes through the head, but it gets down and settles in the heart, right? And I, say, I said this, we, we take all of these classes so we can grow in that knowledge, we, we want to grow in the understanding of who he is. Because if not, idle time creates idle time. Idle, I-D-L-E, is a person avoiding work. Lazy, this is, the, this is a dictionary definition. Without purpose or effect, pointless. Spending time doing nothing. Therefore, you're staying the same. You're not growing. You're not advancing. If you're, probably, you're probably receding. I say that that creates idle time, I-D-O-L, which is something that takes the place of God in a person's life, something that alters your behavior away from God. We don't want that. We want to grow deeper in our knowledge and understanding of him. I, I like what it says, to please God, we must increase or grow in our knowledge of God. I, and I'll end with this, these last thoughts about knowledge. This word knowledge is a very, very powerful um, Greek word. It's a Greek word, epigenosis. Say that. Epigenosis. It means recognition, full discernment. It comes also from a word that means to be fully acquainted with, to be fully acquainted with. And it comes from two words. The first word, gnosis or, or uh, gnosko, it means to know. That's, that's the word to know. But this word in front of it is very, very powerful. It's the word epi, epigenosko or epigenosis. And that word epi means this. It's, it's, it's really powerful. It means to superimpose, to superimpose knowledge, to know God so much as to be superimposed on him, to become one with him. I look at the, I put this, uh, uh, this quickly, this illustration. Here's God, here's you. When we're superimposed, we're the next picture. We become one. But that's what the word is saying here. It's not just to know him, gnoso. It's, it's not just knowledge. We're not just getting knowledge. We're getting knowledge so that we can be superimposed upon the Lord, that we can really become one with God, one with who he is, so that we can get out there and tell a world that needs to know about the great things that God has done. I've said always my job is to not 
make you believe what I believe, but that you might know what you believe, why you believe it, and then you can articulate that faith to a generation, to a world that so desperately needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful for a church that has such a desire to grow. They're taking classes that are not stopping. They want to know him more and more and more. And that is you people. What a privilege it is to be a pastor of people who are running so hard, so fast after God. I am so blessed, so thankful, so encouraged, and so motivated by you guys. Thank you for being who you are. And thank you for giving your faith away to a world that needs to hear it so, so badly. Well, without any further ado, let me talk, let me introduce Pastor Tom. He's the one that makes all of our Bible foundations go so amazing. Pastor Tom, give it up! How exciting! Oh, my. So today, we're celebrating how God changes and impacts our lives through his word. We live in a world today that desperately needs direction. It needs instruction from God's word. Our culture increasingly does not provide solid ground upon which to build our lives. We need to be aware of that. We need to not be discouraged by that, but we need to be aware of that. In Matthew 7, 24 through 25, can you hear me okay? I'm hearing myself twice. <laughs> uh, in Matthew 20, uh, 7, 24 through 25, it says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. Can any of you relate to floods coming and winds blowing and circumstances beating on your life? Well, if you're standing on the rock, you will not fall. You will stand. This is how Jesus concludes his teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. He's saying the, the, some of the most important things that have ever been said to mankind. Hear my words and do them. The rock here in that scripture is referring to Jesus, obviously. And in John 1, we learned that that Jesus, the rock, is also Jesus, the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was with, the word was God, and the word was with God, was with God, and the word was God. And then John 1, 14, it became flesh in Jesus. Took me a bit there. Uh, but we learn that Jesus the rock is also Jesus the word. When you build your life on Jesus and his word, you'll be building on a solid foundation. In this parable, Jesus is drawing a dividing line between himself and any other foundation. He's drawing a dividing line between himself and anything else you can build your life on. And at this church, we seek to help people build their lives on Jesus build their lives on his word. And that has to become practical. You have to put some effort and intention into that in order for that to be the result. And I thank God we're part of a church where our pastors prioritize that and have over decades. We want to help you get solid footing in life. We all need it. We all need solid footing at every stage of life. And with his word and building our life on it, we can have that. To do that, though, we must first learn, like Pastor Phil said, what God's Word says so that we know what to do. So that, in a very real way, sums up why we offer Bible-based education from young to old. That's getting more personal. <laughs> For adults, we offer carpenter series. We offer all the Bible Foundations classes, Mirror 1 and 2, and other CMT classes and spiritual leadership classes, all these classes we offer for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. In this world, we're inundated with lies every day about what life is really all about and how it's to be lived. It's so easy to get off track. Therefore, it becomes extremely important to know the truth found in the Word of God, the Bible. 
given to us by our Creator so that we can live in that truth. Psalm 119, 105 and 107 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'm severely afflicted or I'm going through some tough times. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. We can always cry out to him. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. We're in those moments of desperation and difficulty or when we're rejoicing. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word and not circumstance. We don't want to just read the Bible. We want to live the Bible. And as we grow, and as I say each year, God has a way of turning our mess into a message and our test into a testimony. So today, several really cool and courageous people will be testifying to the change and the growth that has happened in their life through applying the Word of God to their lives. Lepeka Fotofili will begin with a testimony about spiritual, or excuse me, about Carpenter Series. Before she comes, could all those who this year have completed or are currently taking Carpenter Series and or Mere One and or Spiritual Leadership, please stand. And we want to pray for you here this morning. So we'll also... Yeah, amen. Amen. Look at all these people. Incredible. We will also be praying for a number of people that are online church attenders uh, who also took these classes online. So we'll be praying for you also. Lord, right now we lift up all these incredible saints to you, God. Thank you for their hunger, their thirsting for you and for righteousness and to want to make your word real in their lives and to live it out and to shine you into a dark world. And right now we seal in the truth, oh God, that you have placed in their heart through all the teaching they've been exposed to from your word. We thank you, Lord, that they do hunger and thirst for righteousness, that there are people that said, here I am, Lord, use me. And Lord, right now we pray that the truth would be sealed in and that they would understand that it's living and alive and growing in their heart. And right now, Lord, we ask you to bear much fruit. Let their lives bear much fruit through their lives and their testimony and their story. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we also want to thank everyone who has been involved in making all these ministries happen. I mean, it is an army, literally. It's incredible. So we have children's and youth ministries, Mir, Carpenter Series, Bible Foundations. You're going to see their names on the insert in the bulletin that you received this morning. So please take time to look at that and appreciate all the people that it takes, as Pastor Phil mentioned, to put on these ministries. Utterly incredible.